Okay, it has been a while since the My Little Pony movie has hit theaters and is now released to the public on Blu-ray and DVD. So now I can finally talk about this movie without getting death threats about how super fantastic it is. Spoiler alert, it's just... okay. Like, I have never seen a movie that I was just so okay with. How's the story? It's okay. How are the characters? They're okay. How are the songs? They're okay. It's just a very okay movie. I can't say it's a good movie, but I also can't say it's a bad movie either. It has some positive stuff that I like, but also has some other things that I don't like. The fandom, on the other hand, heard what I said and decided to disagree with me, and that's okay. When the My Little Pony movie hit theaters, it felt like a law for a while that if you're in the Brody fandom and you say anything negative that isn't, this is the best movie ever made, people will get angry at you because they think you're hurting the reputation of My Little Pony. I don't know, I think we're doing a pretty good job hurting it ourselves. Now, before I dive into the movie and explain why it's just okay, let's talk a little bit about the history behind it. In 2014, Sony Pictures was hacked by a group of hackers and leaked a bunch of personal documents of possible films. Hasbro contacted Sony about partnering up in order to settle an agreement of turning their hit cartoon show My Little Pony Friendship is Magic into a full-length feature film. Most of the stuff that was leaked were early drafts of the script and some character names like Cosmos, who was later turned into Tempest. It wasn't until 2016 when some concept art for the movie was revealed and everyone got really excited that there was a My Little Pony movie in the works and it would hit theaters on October 6, 2017 with the budget of 24 to 29 million dollars. And how much money did the movie make in its release? 60 million dollars worldwide. So everything I said about it being a failure, I was completely wrong. When I talk about this movie, I'm going to treat it as a movie and not compare it to the show too much. If I did that, then there's going to be a lot of problems with it, such as, why did Twilight need a crystal ball to turn the characters into sea ponies when she already knows a spell on how to turn ponies into griffins and breezies? So if you're expecting the continuity in this movie to line up with the show, then good luck to you. I saw this movie on opening night with one of my friends, who knows little to nothing about My Little Pony and I wanted an outsider perspective on it. We both love the animation, and I'm not going to lie, this is pretty gorgeous to look at. Especially in the opening scene when the ponies are flying through the sky with that awesome tune. They also did an amazing job of blending 3D environments with 2D animated characters. I was really skeptical with the animation at first when I saw the trailer, but that was a trailer and the movie wasn't fully finished yet. When they said the ponies were going outside of Equestria, I thought it would be awesome to see what new characters and creatures they would discover. But this is the fifth My Little Pony movie! Can't we get a movie that takes place in Equestria? Outside of Equestria isn't really that interesting, as all we saw were characters that were just weird anthropomorphic furries that didn't make much sense. Like, why is there a shark that can walk on land with gills? Why is Capper a cat when Rarity has a pet just like him? Why does Grubber acknowledge this is a fish man? Does he even know what a man is? I mean, at least the Questure girls followed what they established that the world was just going to be a human version of their world. Another thing we did like were the songs, as they were very catchy and were really fun to listen to. I even have a bunch of them that I still jam out to, but if you really think about it, only a few songs serve an actual purpose to the plot. The first song is All the Ponies Singing in Canterlot, and it does a really good job of introducing new people to the world of Equestria and shows us what they should expect. Friendship. The next song in the movie is where Rainbow Dash convinces a group of delivery birds to go back to doing what they love, which changes who they are for the rest of the film. Capper does change, but it's not until after he's confronted by Tempest and sees the button that Rarity fixed. Plus I hate songs that are all about trusting a character, but said character betrays them two seconds later, making that entire song feel pointless. One of the most amazingly pointless songs in the entire movie has to be One Small Thing. It's super catchy, but it doesn't do anything to progress the film or show us what the sea ponies have to offer. The main characters get kicked out after Twilight tries to steal their magic ball, and that's the last we see of them! Yeah, they show up at the end, but they don't do anything to help other than to just sell toys. After Twilight has a fight with her friends that feels really out of place, she gets captured by Tempest. 
Tempest sings to explain why she's doing this and gives us a more in-depth look at her character rather than just giving Emily Blunt a song for the sake of singing. Open up your eyes, see the world from where I stand. Me the last song by Sia was introduced to us at the beginning of the film, so we knew she was going to sing, plus it's also Sia, so of course we're going to get a song from her. She was marketed like she was going to play a big part in helping the ponies on their quest, but she didn't really do anything but get captured and put in a birdcage. Oh, I get it. I was really disappointed in the Storm King, but now I can understand why they built him up to be a big bad guy, so we could get more of a laugh when he's just revealed to be a mean fun kind of villain, sort of like Discord. In fact, Discord does make an appearance, but where was he through the entire movie? He could have easily fixed everything. It would have probably been awesome to see him take on the Storm King in a battle, or at least both of them team up to take over Equestria. I really loved how they treated Spike in this movie. He was portrayed as an actual character and not a joke, which was done way better in this movie than the last four seasons of My Little Pony. When Twilight and her friends decided to go their separate ways, Spike actually stood by Twilight and comforted her in one of the best scenes in the entire movie, as it shows that he can be a well-written character and not as a joke. That award goes to this Sonic Forces character reject, Grubber. You were just annoying, not even funny annoying like Pinkie Pie, just annoying annoying. Your leading commander, Tempest, on the other hand, I cannot love this character enough. All the fan art and body pillows I've seen of her are well deserved as she kicks ass! She's a monster! The new characters that got introduced were pretty cool. I like Skystar, even though she's just Pinkie Pie. The pirates were pretty funny on how they just dropped everything to have lunch. Capra was meh, the Storm King was an alright villain, Tempest is my waifu, and Grubber can just die in a hole. I just think the movie had too many characters and not enough time to focus on all of them. Before I saw the Pony movie, I was worried that there was going to be too much fan pandering, and yeah, there is, but it's kept down to a minimum. I mean, Derpy gets killed off within the first few minutes of the film, so I didn't have to worry about it too much. Most of the complaints that I have with the movie were cleared up in the art of the My Little Pony The Movie book. The book goes into more detail of the production of the movie and why some things had to be changed as the higher ups at Hasbro controlled everything of what was going to be done in the movie, which explained why some scenes and characters felt really out of place. In the book, you can actually see the original version of what the movie was going to look like and redeem the hippogriffs as they were originally supposed to come back to help out in the climax. Overall, I really do like the Pony movie, and if you're a fan of the show, then you're gonna love this movie. It did a really good job on some parts, but also failed on other parts. If you like the Pony movie, that is perfectly fine. I would really love to hear your thoughts on what you thought of it. But just remember that this is my opinion. You don't have to agree with it, and that's okay. I'm Tootsie Forever, and thank you for watching.